Because remember, Satan is a copycat. He's not a creator. He's a deceiver, a liar, the father of it. He is not creative at all. And he'll take things and misconstrue them and make you think, oh, yeah, that's that. Mm, no. What does this say? You got, you have Colossians yet? Okay. Here we go. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 13. It says, he has delivered us from the power of darkness. Context reveals that it's talking about Father through Christ. He has delivered us. He, he, he is not delivering us, present tense. He's not going to deliver us, future tense. It says he has, has his past tense, done deal, time of action, already taken place. He has delivered. So that means Satan is not my God. Satan is not my control source. Satan has no legal right to tell me what to do because I have been delivered. Here it is right there. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed or translated us into the kingdom of the son of his love. That's where I am. I'm in Christ. I'm in the center of the family of God. I don't care what the enemy comes at me with. I say, no, 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 no. Can you read devil? If you can, I'll read it out loud to you. See, he had delivered us. That us is me. See, you need to make everything in the covenant personal. See, you need to make it personal. Wherever it says we, that talk about you. When it says us, talk about you. You have to make it personal. You have to, you have to say it. You have to confess it. Death in life. In the power of the tongue. And we pick up, I'm telling you, it's amazing. We pick up stuff. That's why I don't listen to the news. Now and then when I'm in my car, we have a, we have a 24 hour a day, a couple of stations in LA that that's all they do is the news, news, traffic and weather. That's all they do. But just watch the, watching the news because it's all bad news. And if they, if they ever say anything positive, it's usually at the last two or three seconds of the program and they laugh about it when the commentators are telling you about it. So why listen to that garbage day after day after day? Now, periodically, as I said, in my car, I'll listen to the news just to find out what's going on in the world, just to get a little brief temperature of what's happening. But just to sit there and listen to that stuff all day long and every single day, it's all bad news. Somebody kills somebody. Who cares? That's not helping me. Listen to the Word of God. That's why God invented cassette tapes. God invented cassette tapes to promote the word. God invented CDs to promote the word. God invented DVDs to promote the word. But the Christians are so stupid that they let the world pirate all of God's ideas and make a fortune on it, and you're too cheap to even go out and buy a CD or a DVD of a message. Thinking, I can remember what that man said. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I said it, and I can't remember everything I said. <laughs> so, I'm, we've been delivered. All right, look at this. You're in Colossians. Look at chapter 2. I am, I have, and I'm where God says I am. And I could do whatever God says I can do. Not because I'm presently doing it, but because that's how he's made me. Now, I have to begin to, I have to know it first, and I have to begin to confess it. You talk yourself right into it. Because you've got to reorient yourself, because we've, we've been hearing primarily negative stuff all our lives. You know, even in coming out of homes where there was a bad situation in the, in the home, and, you know, well, you, you're going to be just like your old daddy. He was old wino. You're going to be a wino. And your mama got pregnant when she was 12 years old. You're probably going to go out there and do the same thing. We hear all, you know, kind of things like that. Sometimes parents think that they're, they're trying to help their kids by telling them all that negative stuff, and it doesn't always work. And so we're bombarded all the time with negativism. Got to get the word of God, and you have to begin to say it enough so that your ear gets attuned to hearing what thus says God. Amen. Not the circumstances. We don't deny, listen carefully now, we don't deny the circumstances. What we deny is the circumstances right to tell us how to live our lives. Amen. You get the difference? Yeah. Circumstances are real. <laughs> Let me show you how real they are. Those are flowers. 
That's a circumstance. They're really there for me to say, the flowers are not there. There are no flowers. I don't see green. I don't see flowers. That's stupid. Better known as dumb and dumber. <laughs> so we, we don't deny the reality and existence. I just deny them the right to go home with me tonight and sleep in my bed with me. In other words, I deny their right to have any influence on my life, apart from what I might smell and view. That's it. But we don't deny the things that we see. All right, Colossians, what did I say? Chapter, chapter 2. You still here? Yeah. You getting anything out of this? Yeah. All right. All right. Okay, let's see. Where do I want to go? Okay. All right, watch this now. Oh, geez. I, you know, I don't know if I ought to read this. Now, I don't really, I'm, I, I, I'm not trying to be funny, but no, 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 no. Wait, listen, listen. Because after we read this, you are going to be held accountable for what you do with it. Be, it would be better to stay ignorant. <laughs> then you could tell the Lord, I didn't know that, Lord. I didn't know that. All right, you asked for it. Here it goes. Colossians chapter what? Two. 2, verse 9 and 10. For in him, context will let us know it's Christ, in him, for in him dwells all the fullness of God bodily, and you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. You are complete. Did, did God lie? No. Well, then why are you whining and complaining about what you not, what you don't have, and what you can't do? What does complete mean? What's the definition of complete? What? Lacking nothing. I like that. So well, why are you whining and crying about what you can't do and what you don't have and all this stuff? We're complete in him. But I have to begin to say that. And like I said, the average Christian and most people in the Christian community, unfortunately, because they don't know these truths, they will accuse you of being a braggart. They'll accuse you of being arrogant and all that. You know what? Call me whatever you want while I'm making my fifth deposit for the week into the bank in my personal account. <laughs> you know, call me what you want. I don't have no problem with it. Because you know, what you call me is your problem, not mine. What would become my problem is if I believe what you said about me. And I say, I can't control what you say. I don't care what I do, somebody won't like it. So, I choose to say what the word says. All right, let's look at something else. All right, uh, yes, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. I gotta go, I gotta cut some of it. I can't get it all in. Uh, we're talking about our standing, where we are in Christ. All right, go to Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. I am, I have, I can do, and I am where God says I am. I started confessing that in 1970. I got a hold of this. I started saying it. It's, it's, it's incredible. You have, to, you have to experience it. But it's a lifestyle. It's something you do 24-7, 365. And you can't let the circumstances... I don't care what they look like. You can't let them be the determinant as to how you see yourself. You have to let God's word reveal who you are. And you have to, oh gee, you have to stay with it until it produces results. And see, our, our society is so, everything is, is, um, is microwave, instant, this, instant, that, instant, other. There is no instant success. You will pay your dues. You need to pay your dues so that when you get to the finish line and you're the winner, you can appreciate having won. Are you following me? So when I say pay your dues, it simply means you've got to go through the process, starting out and staying with it till it begins to produce. Now, just give you a good illustration. <laughs> My wife and I, we first got married, I came out of a dysfunctional home. And, and I was out of control. I, we didn't have that much money, but the little we had, I spent it. I bought every new toy that came. Oh, my God, it plays in reverse. I got to have one of those. If I don't get that now, they're not going to be making it anymore. I know the kids need clothes for school. I know September's coming up. I know they need new clothes, but I got to have that. It plays in reverse. 
and all, all that. And so I kept us in debt. Finally, I got tired of it. I said, I'm, I'm, it's over. I'm done. I, don't want to, I want out now. Well, the thing about it is I didn't get into it now. I worked on that for years, screwing up our finances, messing it up with my so-called smarts. And so we decided we want out. And we found, about, found out about tithing, didn't really know really how to deal with it. But, but we saw it said, you're cursed with a curse. Just that part of it right there, I didn't like. You know, curse would have been bad enough, but curse with a curse? <laughs> Give it a rest. Are you kidding me? I mean, you know, just curse sounds bad, but curse with a curse? I said, no, we want out. So we, 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 we got a hold of the tithe, and we, we knew it was 10%. Now, we, we weren't making it on 100% of the little bit of income we had. We weren't making it. We were struggling. Our struggles had struggles. And so we said, how are we going to make it on 90%? But I said, we, we got together, and we agreed, well, it couldn't be any worse than now because now is not working. <laughs> now is definitely not working. So if we go somewhere else and it doesn't work, we haven't lost anything. So we decided to tithe. So we started tithing. We found out it said, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. And all those good things about giving and, and then tithing. The Father said, I'll open the windows of heaven. And, and so we started tithing. 1967. 1967. And we started sowing that seed with, I mean, literally trembling, trying to figure out how we're going to make it on 90%. Well, I, weren't, I wasn't paying all the bills anyway, so what's the difference? I, wa I, wanted, I wanted to get into a position where I could pay everybody and get them off my back. Anyway, we started tithing 1967, and we started confessing the word. We believe we received the return. We believe that we received the windows of heaven blessing. It didn't happen overnight. Like I said, we didn't get into the problem overnight. Most people don't get into their problems overnight. Been working on them. That lousy marriage you have right now, you've been working on that for years. You got that thing so screwed up. <laughs> anyway, we won't, we won't go there, will we? Hallelujah! Praise the Lord. Anyway, so we started tithing. Watch this now. Watch this now. We were struggling with 100%. Now we're going to give 10% and we're going to have to survive on 90. How are we going to make it? Well, we're going to do what God said. And then, of course, later on I found out what the word really said about certain things, about giving, so forth and so on. So we got, it got so good to us, we started tithing. Then we said, you know what, this is good. We're going to bump this up to 12.5%. Now, we know tithe technique is 10, but we use the principle of percentage. So 12.5%. Then it got so good, we went to 15%. Then we went to 20%. Then we went to 25%. Then we went to 30%. Then we went to 35%. Right now, today, we give away 40% of all of our money, all of our income. Now, I only use that as a, a real-life illustration to show you we live better on the 60% that's left over then we would have lived on the 100% and robbed God. But we had to say it and then do it. Faith is acting on what you believe. So if we believe it, we got to do it. So I just use that just as one personal illustration. And it's amazing. I, my wife and I are amazed. We wonder sometimes, how does it work? I don't know. I mean, I don't know how it works. All I know is it works. And I like it so well, I'm going to just keep on working it. Amen. Amen. So that's the first thing, where we are. There's some other things I have to say about that, but I, I really don't have the time. But you have to see yourself as Father sees you. Everything God says you are, you are. Everywhere God says you are, you are. Everything God says you have, you have. Everything God says you can do, you can do. You may not be presently experiencing that but death and life in the power of the tongue not in the circumstances so i'm out of time and we'll pick up here tomorrow evening yeah. praise god